गुरु ब्रह्मा गुरु विष्णु गुरु देवो महेश्वर गुरु साक्षात पर ब्रह्मा तस्मै श्री गुरवे नम गुरवे सर्वोकाषजे भवरोगिना निधये सर्विद्या दक्षिणामूर्त नम हरि ओ भद्रम कर्णे शृणुयाम देवा भद्रम पश्येक्षजत्रा स्थिरंग सुष्टुवागम सस्तनु व्यशेम देवित यदायु स्वस्ति नो वृद्धश्रवा स्वस्ति नूषा विश्व स्वस्ति नस्ताक्षो अरिष्टने स्वस्ति नो बृहस्पतिर्दा ओ शाति 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 हरि so in the first session we saw shankara telling us to drop actions that generate impressions he says akarmanyeva moksha if you are a seeker of liberation you need to learn to minimize your actions only engage in those actions that will either purify your faculties or that are conducive for you fulfilling your swadharma every other action is just useless just discard them yeah so being aware of actions and minimizing actions that's the first thing the second thing is said you have to take a two pronged approach one is yoga ruda and gnana nishta means you develop that skill of dealing with the mind at the same time engage yourself with the knowledge again and again and then he said in order to seek knowledge of the self which is what will take you to liberation you need to be qualified if you are not qualified he very categorically states you will not get it just leave it yeah And then he describes these four qualifications and among these he gives more emphasis on vairagya and mukshatva intense dispassion and intense longing just not a casual enquiry and intense enquiry today in some of the shlokas you will see how intensely the disciple asks the master and that intensity as intense as somebody who is lost in the desert is thirsty for water if that intensity comes to you for liberation and dispassion develops along with it then it becomes much easy and with that intensity is not there then the other qualities will also not develop they just are like the appearance of water in a mirage says so what so develop these four qualifications once you are established in them then we can move towards the self the knowledge of the self And there are a few shlokas where the disciple who is after fixing himself or establishing himself to some level in the four pillars approaches the guru wanting to know the knowledge of the self the next few shlokas i will just read the translations and then before we move to the actual shlokas one who has strengthened the four pillars should approach the master with devotion and humility the master is one who is versed in scriptures he is free from impurity and impressions he is free from desires he is the knower of the self who reposes in the self he is tranquil like the wood in which the fuel is burnt out he is unconditionally compassionate and is a dear friend to those who surrender to him seeking knowledge worship that guru serve him with humility and once he is pleased approach him appropriately 
and ask him your doubts about the self and now the next few shloka show the intensity of the disciple the disciple says oh compassionate one oh knowledgeable one please uplift me from this ocean of samsara i am tired and burnt out in this samsara only you can rescue me you have crossed and you are helping others to cross out of your compassion please enunciate this path to me how do i cross this ocean of samsara how do i become free please remove this suffering of samsara i am burnt by the fire of samsara and i am struggling to cope i have got no options left but you and then the guru says vedantartha vicharena jayate gnana muttamam tenatyantik samsara dukkana shobhavatyanu is by diligently studying the scriptures by studying the vedanta you will attain very high quality of knowledge this knowledge will remove the ignorance and the ignorance which is the root cause of all this suffering of samsara will also be removed from that tena atyantika samsara dukha nasho bhavati this circular beginning and ending cycle of birth and death which you call samsara and the suffering that it brings about both will be eliminated will be removed with the arising of the uttamam gnanam where is the source of this gnanam vedanta artha vicharena by engaging in the knowledge of the scriptures vedanta in the upanishadic studies shraddha bhakti jnana yoga anmukshu muktir hetun bhakti sakshat shrutir ki yo va yeteshve vatishtatya mushya moksha avidya kalpita श्रद्धा भक्ति ध्यान योगा मुमुक्षो मुक्ते हेतून वक्ति द थ्री इंपॉर्टेंट टूल्स श्रद्धा भक्ति एंड ध्यान फेथ डिवोशन एंड मेडिटेशन दीज आर द वंस व्हिच विल सपोर्ट यू इन योर सीकिंग ऑफ लिबरेशन so once you are established in these three aspects what happens avidya kalpita deha bandhat moksha because of ignorance this attachment that has happened to this body and the consequent bondage will be removed see faith is a quality of a mature intellect most people think people only those who can't reason they have faith faith is beyond reasoning only an intelligent mind can see that all that is happening this entire organization called this universe is run by a much higher intelligence which is much much smaller than my individual capability and that brings faith wow this is how this is happening how all the planets are moving how the single cell knows where which part should become the eyes which should become the nose which should become the hands how does that seed know where the root should come out where the shoot should come out that the leaf should be green the flower should be red when to flower when to drop the leaves when to sprout this enormous intelligence is beyond my understanding and that generates faith a devotion arises when you realize the impotency of your own strength and you see what am i i'm not able to do anything there is nothing that is in my control when you see that nothing is in your control then the ability to offer everything arises in you 
this body is not mine what is happening in this body is also not mine this mind is also yours all the turbulence in this mind is also yours that is devotion the mind which is restless and wavering which looks at the still brahman the consciousness which is its source and says you are that and i surrender to you that is bhakti and dhyana dhyana is when the small drop becomes the ocean when the drop falls into the ocean and loses its identity do you see when a drop falls into the ocean the drop disappears and it becomes the ocean and that is meditation when these three tools you become established in then that bondage of this limited identity i am this body which is arisen out of ignorance will disappear अज्ञान योगात्मस्तव ह्यनात्मबंधस्तत संसृति तोर्विवोकोदितबोधवी अज्ञानक्यम प्रदेत्समूल अज्ञान योगात्मस्तव अनात्म बंदस्तत एव संस्मृति परमात्मन तव हि यू आर् द परमात्मा विच यू आर् सीकिंग यू आर् द डिवैन बट यू हर गॉट एन इट बिकॉज ऑफ वाट अज्ञान योगा बिकॉज फॉर असोसिएशन विथ इग्नोरेन्स अनात्म बंद यू हव अटैच युअर सेल्फ विथ द अनात्मा द मेटीरियल आस्पेक्ट ऑफ एक्सीस्टेंस अज्यूमिंग दैट इट इज रियल and that is why you are having samsmruti hi samsruti hi means repetitiveness samsruti hi samsruti that coming and going avagaman which is called that samsruti hi is happening this coming and going repetitive pattern of samsara is happening because out of ignorance you have forgotten that you are divine you are that and you have associated yourself with this material existence the body and the mind how will you overcome this विवेकोदिता बोध वक्नि ही व्हेन यू लाइट द फायर ऑफ विवेका इन दैट फायर अज्ञान कार्यम प्रदहेत समूलम दिस इग्नोरेंस विल बी बर्न्ट फ्रॉम इट्स रूट्स सो विद द अराइजल ऑफ विवेका द पावर ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन द एबिलिटी टू नो व्हाट इज परमानेंट एंड व्हाट इज टेंपरेरी व्हाट इज रियल एंड अनरियल व्हाट हैपेंस दिस repetitive pattern of coming and going will come to an end and then the disciple asks ko nama bandha kathamesha agatah katham pratishthasya katham vimokshah ko savanatma paramakka atma tayor viveka what is bondage how did bondage come into existence how did it get established in me how do i get free from this bondage what is atma what is anatma what is viveka please enlighten me shri gururvacha the guru is very impressed and he says that he says i'm impressed with your questioning i'm impressed with the sincerity of your seeking and with the intensity of your desire to be free i feel privileged to teach you and your family should be very proud of you to have got somebody in your family who wants to become free brahmi bhavitum ichasi who wants to understand the brahman and become free from ignorance masters are waiting for sincere disciples 
similar conversation happens between Nachiketa and Yama in the Katopanishad. When Nachiketa asks Yama, talk to me about the knowledge of the self, he tries to distract him and he says, oh, you are too small for this. Why do you want to know all this? Why don't you take this wealth? Why don't you take these kingdoms? Why don't you take a long life? I will give you beautiful apsaras, dancers. I will give you wonderful elephants and uh, horses. Chiketa brushes them all aside in one stroke. He says, you keep your horses, you keep your dancers. You give me something which you cannot take. All this you will give it to me and you will take it away in a few years. What's the point? Give me something that you cannot take. And then Yama has this sense of, wow, what a disciple. He is not to be tempted. Similarly here the Guru is saying, wow, I am impressed with your intensity of desire. Living in this world surrounded by these conditioned minds, which are pulling you again and again into the pleasure, you are able to rise about, you are able to see the misery in this. In the last session, the Guru said, how do you develop, how do you rise above the craving for pleasures? In every pleasure, see the defect in it. And whenever the craving comes, bring to your awareness the defect of that. Just like you don't go to the drugs, because you, but the moment you think about drugs, what comes to your mind is not the euphoria it gives you, but the problem it was going to create to you. If you can have the same attitude towards the pleasure, and you will see, I am burnt in this fire of samsara. I am tired of doing the same things. I am exhausted coming and going, coming and going again and again. Then you have become eligible for this knowledge. Now I am going to enunciate to you what is to be done. Listen carefully. And the first point with the Guru makes is the importance of self-effort. Giving a few examples, he says why self-effort is so important. He says, the loan taken by a father can be cleared by the son, but your karma you only have to clear. Your children can't clear, neither your parents or friends can take it away from you. If you are carrying a load on your head, somebody can take it and keep it aside and relieve you. But if you are hungry, only if you eat the food, the hunger will be relieved. Just by seeing the medicine and somebody else taking the medicine, your disease won't be cured. If your disease has to be cured, you have to take the medicine yourself. Somebody might tell you a lot about what the moon is, how it is. But you will not get anything about it unless you lift your head and see the moon by your own eyes. So like this, he gives a lot of examples saying that you can't rely on somebody to make you free. The bondage is because of ignorance in your mind and that ignorance has to be removed by yourself, your own effort. And without that discipline and effort, you will not be able to be free. Avidya kama karmadi Pashabandham vimochitum Kaha shaknu yadvinatmanam Kalpa koti shatairapi Avidya is ignorance. Kama karmadi pashabandham Action and its impressions and the bondage that you are experiencing because of your own impressions. Vimochitam, you want to be free from this. Only if you put your effort, you will be able to achieve something. The one who is in bondage, only when he puts an effort to free himself, that is possible. Otherwise, you can stay a hundred million years. Kalpa koti shatai. A kalpa is, I think, a day of Brahma, which is almost 365,000 years. So he says, Koti Shata Koti Kalpa. So many zeros you can't imagine. So that many years, even if you live, but if you don't do this, 
if you don't put intense self effort you will not be able to rise above ignorance and the bondage of the impressions the actions and their impressions na yoge nana sankhena karmana no na vidyaya brahmatmai katva bodhena moksha sithyati nanyatha very powerful statement and this statement should not be spoken to somebody who is very fresh on the path shankara's path is that of direct realization through intense inquiry into the nature of existence and his entire philosophy or his entire understanding realization he says in this one word brahma atma aikyata there is no difference between the jiva and the brahman there is no difference between the individual self and the universal self what you call me and god they are not different at all they are just one but every other thing whether it is yoga or sankhya or karma or vidya they all are based in duality in the path of yoga me and the mind mind is the obstacle to reach the divine in the path of bhakti me and the divine i am lower he is higher sankhya prakriti and purusha again too here vidya means the scientific logical analysis of the material existence which shows diversity everything there is so much science breaks down one into many and studies each one have you noticed this science revels in making one into many spirituality synthesizes integrate science analyzes divides analysis is division you break something into its components that is analysis so it says anything that breaks the one into many will not take you to liberation only that which takes everything into one only that brahma atma ekatva bodhena moksha sidyati na anyata nothing else will take you na yoga na sankhya na karma na vidya then if you say ah these are useless then these are all preparatory these are all very helpful for you to get that eligibility so that you can drop them it's like that staircase comes to you to climb into the fl- flight or get down from the flight once you got down you won't take the staircase with you you will just leave it and move but without that you can't get down or get up you can't get into the plane or get out of the plane without that appendage that comes and fixes to the flight but its purpose is only transitory so that you can move from one realm to another once you have reached there then you leave it and move on are you getting what i am saying vag vai kare shabd chari shastra vyakhyana kaushalam vai dushyam vidusham tadvad bhuktayena tu muktaye bhuktayena tu muktaye you can enjoy them but they won't take you to freedom what are them vag vai kare somebody speaks so very well shabdajri they use the most wonderful words you have shastra vyakhyana they can quote the scriptures like anything in the back of your hand shastra vyakhyana kaushalam vaidushyam they are very intelligent and when you are come across these sorts of extremely beautiful talented orator giving a wonderful lecture quoting everything left and right bhuktaye na tu mukte that will only give you some entertainment but it will not take you to liberation what he is saying here is he is hinting that somebody else doing all this will not take you anywhere what you are doing is what matters avijnate pare tatve shastradhiti निष्फला 
very beautiful shloka this is one of the ways of which is used in the upanishad it's called paradoxical statements you see this very often in the kena upanishad what he says here avignate pare tatve shastra ditistu nishpala if you engage in rituals and studying scriptures and other things without knowing what is brahman that is useless and when you have known the brahman scriptures are useless the scriptures and rituals which do not take you to brahman are useless and when you know brahman scriptures and rituals are useless when all that you engage in all the spiritual practices the purpose is to take you towards meditation actions which don't make you meditative are useless when you are meditative then actions are useless are you getting what i am saying so beautiful so the purpose of every ritual is to take you beyond the ritual is to take you beyond the mind beyond the action into that space of meditativeness if it is not doing it then it is useless and when you reach that state of meditativeness then you can drop the ritual you are disinterested in ritual when you have become meditative is but natural and he explains this a little more in the next shloka going to too many discourses going to this reading this book reading that book listening to this tape that tape what will it do shabda jalam maharanyam you will get stuck caught up in a web of words chitta bhramana karanam it will cause you delusion imagine you are walking through a forest a dense forest suddenly you, you lose your way you got thick big trees and shrubs everywhere you don't know where to turn where to go he says this is how it is being too much engaged in the ritualistic part of life in too much studying of the scriptures and going after one shastra after another doing this doing that shabda jalam maharanyam chitta bhramana karanam trying to find an answer in doing so many things monday this puja tuesday this puja wednesday this thursday this friday this every 15 days this you know getting stuck in too much of doing and activities will just make you deluded ata prayat prayatna gnatavyam tatva gnat tatva atma then what to do just approach somebody who has been liberated and then just do what he tells you you know trying to find your way and inventing the wheel again and again just go to somebody who has done it who has crossed and just hold his hands and move with him say for example if i have never used an android phone if you give me an android phone now and you give me a manual with it said look this is the phone this is the manual user manual read through it and then you use the phone probably will take a week or 10 days you want to get the basics properly but if somebody is using that phone day in day out and he can come on i know i've been using it for 10 years this is how you switch it on this is how you, this is the charge button this is the how you put your password this is the face id 5 minutes do you see so either you can go through manuals and try to understand it or you can hold to somebody who is actually using it and then go away through him agnana sarpadashtasya brahma gnana aushadham vina kimu vedaischa shastraischa kimu mantraih kim aushadhaih speaking very directly here and very what is it? to the point he is not wasting much time at all 
saying if you are bitten by the serpent of ignorance the only antidote for that is the light of knowledge brahma gnana if you leaving that if you go to vedaischa shastraischa mantrai kimoshadi if you think the scriptures and the rituals and the mantras are going to help you then you are lost only the knowledge of the self will remove the ignorance nothing else just by listening to the word medicine without drinking or eating that medicine your disease will not go away similarly without having an aparoksha anubhava of the self you will never become free just by listening to the word brahman brahman will not make you realize brahman brahma shabdair na muchyate vina aparoksha anubhavam without any direct experience just by listening to the word brahman 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 will not take you to brahman so there are three types of experience they are called pratyaksha paroksha aparoksha pratyaksha is a direct experience that is limited to the senses like for example you touch something hot and you realize oh this is hot this is your direct experience aparoksha is an experience which you have deduced by deduction ah okay the atom must be in the the nucleus must be in the center the electrons must be in the periphery only because if this is true these particular properties are exhibited you don't have a direct experience you have a direct experience of something else and you going backwards it deduces the source to be in a particular way that's how science works you make an assumption and find a way to prove that assumption or the hypothesis this is aparoksha paroksha gnana it's not your direct experience but you have deduced it through some other experience and then there is aparoksha aparoksha gnana is direct experience which goes beyond the senses you see intuition is an aparoksha gnana your gut feeling which you say is an aparoksha gnana faith is aparoksha that sense that i know there is something here is aparoksha meditation is aparoksha because beyond the senses anything that transcends the mind is aparoksha and the self is beyond the mind realization of the self happens when you gain this ability to transcend the mind and without that ability which happens through enquiry proper guidance knowledge and meditation unless you do these things you will not realize what is brahman and without its realization there is no freedom just by hearing brahman brahman you will never become free or you will not realize brahman see even in this when you read a scripture there are three ways you can understand the first way is the laukika or the literal translation you read a shloka there is a literal translation and you know oh this is it the second level of understanding is an intentional translation truth cannot be conveyed in words but an effort has been made to convey it in as close to truth as possible so by getting through the words you try to see what is in between the words in between the lines you see what is the intention of this person by using these words this is a much more deeper understanding intentional and this is where intuition comes into help you look at something and you feel ah i think it is in this direction this is heading and this happens so often in the gita the same words krishna uses for so many different things at different places so somewhere he says the mind as atma somewhere he calls it mana somewhere he calls antakarana as mana so lot of things but 
when you get a little bit deeper intuitively you can see that oh this is what he is meaning here that is the intuitive way of studying a scripture and then there is a third which is called a spatial way you get into the space of the person who is speaking through meditation you can get there and say ah this is it this is what it is similarly there is a pratyaksha gnana paroksha gnana and aparoksha gnana only the highest understanding realization is the aparoksha gnana and only through that you'll be able to realize the self akrutva drishya vilayam agnyatva tatva matmanah brahma shabdai kuto mukti अकृत्वा दृश्य विलय अज्ञात्वा तत्व अंटिल यू आर एबल टू टर्न योर अटेंशन विच इज गोइंग आउटसाइड ऑल द टाइम इनवर्ड्स टुवर्ड्स योर ओन सेल्फ अंटिल दट टाइम how much ever you heard the word brahman again and again you will never become free mukti rukti matra phalain runa just by uttering the word mukti mukti and brahman brahman you will neither realize brahman nor get freedom if you only the process will only start when the mind when the attention which is going outwards all the time stops and makes a u turn and starts going inwards tattvam atmanah when it turns towards the self akratva shatru samharam agatva kila bhushriyam raja hamiti shabdanno raja bhavitu marhati without defeating the enemies without having access to the wealth of the world just by walking around saying i am a king will not make you a king so what is saying until you be are disciplined committed get through this sadhana of overcoming this conditioning of the mind again and again and again and again the mind runs outside into the world again you hold it educate it bring it back again it runs away again you hold it educate it bring it back until you do it until you slay this enemy of distraction until you enjoy this wealth of meditation and knowledge you can never be called a king just by telling i am a king you will not be a king dive deep into the ocean if you want to find a treasure just by shouting treasure you will not get you have to find the spot you have to find people you have to dig the earth there only then you will find the treasure similarly brahma vidopadesha once you have been advised or enunciated about the brahman you have to do manana and dhyana you have to reflect upon it again and again you have to go into that teaching again and again and meditate upon it to experience what is being told unless you do these two things manana and dhyana over the upadesha of brahman that has been given to you maya karyati rohitam sumamalam tattvam na duryukti bihi that 
that pure consciousness which is covered by this ignorance of maya will not be revealed to you if you want the self to be revealed to you see it is also told in another upanishad it says i think it must be in the kata upanishad only where he says the self will only reveal to the one to whom it wants to reveal you cannot get make the self reveal to yourself self will decide whom to reveal itself to and when to reveal it's always covered by this layer of maya and what you can do all you can do is listen to the advice reflect upon it again and again and meditate upon it tatsmat sarva prayatnena bhava bandha vimuktaye swaireva yatna kartavyo so here he concludes this teaching on how self effort is the most important thing when you are starting how without your effort and not just effort anywhere a, a concentrated an optimal effort in the right direction according to the advice of the master unless you do that you will make no progress and here he says just like when you get a disease you have to put all the effort to take the right medicine to get to the right doctor to take the right diet which is recommended to you and to take the right amount of rest only then you will be free from the disease similarly a see a sincere seeker if you wants to be free from this samsara he has to put intense self effort and without that effort you cannot become free and now the disciple says okay i understand what you say i am ready to put all the effort that is needed what should i do now how do i proceed that we will see next week so three tools are what shraddha bhakti dhyana so self effort in these three directions will help you to make good progress okay sahana vavatu sahana bhunaktu सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वीनवदीतमस्तु मिषावह ओ शातिशाति सुखि सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्रा पश्य कचिदुखभावे लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु लोका समस्ता सुखिनो भवन्तु ओ शाति 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 हरि यो श्री गुरुभ्यो नम हरि